thank you once again uh, for joining us today at matuka tv studio i'm so much blessed with this clip um by the god servant my spiritual father my father in the lord apostle Adami Osai. he really killed the point he unveils a shocking secret that is going to be a blessing to every one of you out there watching this particular clip on how the destiny of men and nations rise and fall in the courts of heaven all right i've the god servant to make emphasis lay friends using the book of daniel chapter 7 verse 9 he unveiled a shocking secret um just um do way to listen to it from the beginning of this script to the end you will you will, your eyes will be open to so many secrets your eyes show you your eyes will open just do it to listen to it and pick the point all right over to you sir daniel chapter 7 verse 9 just to give you an idea god's courtroom just to give you an idea of god's courtroom then i will show you how the politics of justice judgment and equity manipulates destiny upon the face of the earth and why the devil is called an accuser and what potential what capacity does the devil have in in his designation as an accuser and so you will find out if you don't fulfill the requirement that i just showed you in verse 7 you will find out that in some legal issues before the lord your laxity empowers your enemy all right this is the status of god's throne in the sanctuary I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Oh my. I've, I've given you, I'm supposed to read from verse 7, I believe. Then you have a good layout of, um, of, of, uh, yes okay nine and ten and i beheld the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like a, like pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire and a fiery steam issued forth from before him thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him and the judgment was set and the books was, were opened. This is a scenario, uh, this is the kind of glory that is associated with the justice, judgment and equity dimension of God that is sustained in the heavens. It is something that you cannot ignore. You cannot ignore those dynamics. And uh, it is not as if it is when people have died and believers have resurrected. That's when the judgment seat will now become operational. Justice, judgment, and equity goes on right now in the sanctuary of God and there's a massive justice system that is established in God's layer and I want to open your eyes to it in a moment of time. First of all, I may need to take you to the book of Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 12. To bring you up to date with the way the proceedings the proceedings of this court the proceedings of this court i need to bring you up to date and cain talked with abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him and the lord said unto cain where is abel thy brother and he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done for the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground? Give me 11 and leave it there. Because 11 is the judgment that came from that court. I will need to expose you to the proceedings of that court before I show you the kind of judgment that issues from that court. First of all, um, if we were using the Nigerian constitution 
there were only two kinds there are only two kinds recognized witnesses that the nigerian constitution provides for the nigerian constitution provides for either an expert witness or an eye witness an eye witness is someone that was present at the event the scene of the event his, his testimony in court can can tilt uh, the pendulum of justice an expert witness is somebody like a doctor preferably a doctor of internal medicine that runs an autopsy on the dead body he can bring a testimony to court on the strength of his competence in his profession and that can also tilt the scales of justice and judgment but on, unfortunately for king because there was no expert witness on ground and there was no eyewitness on ground so when he was cross-examined where is Abel, your brother. He thought that it was a court of mortals. And so he answered the way you will answer in a magistrate court in Nigeria. He said, Am I my brother's kid? Because if it were a magistrate court, they would not have had anything on him because there is no eyewitness and there is no expert witness. But unfortunately for him, the constitution he was run, it was operated, the court. He was operating under, had a constitution that could accept the witness of blood. Blood was competent witness in that court. Whereas Cain never knew that blood has an utterance that is so tangible, he can, he can, he can stand in the dock and bring about a witness and place a demand on the justice system that is in that layer. He had no knowledge of that. And the fact that he didn't have knowledge of it did not affect the proceedings. I know many of you here don't believe, don't know that there's a justice system that is established in the layer of God. Today we are going to use that system. You will see in the practical session. That justice system is going to do something here. And uh, you know, in the introductory scripture we used, the Bible reveals that God is our king, God is our judge, God is our lawgiver. And when he sits in either or all of these capacities, what does he come to do? He comes to, to save us. Are you here? In order to clear Cain's doubt that he was not sitting before mortals, the case filed was brought, the case file that was left with the registrar of the court was retrieved and uh, this was the content, verse 11 and now thou art cursed from the earth oh wait case file now thou art cursed from the earth which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood so what was in the case file was that the blood of Abel, there was a portion of ground that received it. Even that portion of ground, I you following? He said, you are cursed from the earth. Which, the curse began from that part of the ground that opened his mouth to receive Abel's blood. Now, this man is not aware of the fact that there are infrastructures in the visible realm that can testify against an individual that is in the dock in a court of the invincible status. He said, you are cursed from the earth. And the implication of this curse is that there is no territory upon the face of the earth that Cain can establish his destiny. Have you ever seen a seed that there is no ground on earth that you can plant it for it to grow? That was how the destiny of Cain was after the verdict that came from the judge in this case. Cain was going to be a fugitive. He will come to Zangoka Taf and he will try to settle there. If he plants something, the thing will not grow. Anything he tries to establish, no ground on earth will be able to have accept his destiny. So the best he can be is a wanderer. And that status was put in place by a court. Is that clear? Let me give you an idea quickly because of time. I don't have time. My scripture for the night is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 is my scripture. 1 Peter. 
There's an activity of Satan that I want us to end this night by reason of, of that court. See, the Bible says be sober. It says be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Can we analyze this scripture a little? The word adversary. I'm interested in the word adversary. Let me look it up quickly. I'm interested in that word. Antidicus. The word antidicus in Greek language is an opponent in a lawsuit. So I'm just trying to bring context and perspective to this scripture. An opponent where? In a lawsuit. Now, so the, the Bible calls the devil, the reason for which we are enjoined to be sober and be vigilant is because you have an opponent in a lawsuit. And this opponent goes around like a roaring lion. It means he uses the instrument, he uses the approach of intimidation. And the reason why he uses the approach of intimidation is so that he can find who among us he can devour. So it means that the roaring lion can transform and become a devouring lion. And the platform that he has to achieve this intention is being an opponent in a lawsuit. Do you get that? Now, when I said that this our adversary he's walking about means he's mobile. He moves from one place to the other. You know, when I said that, most of you felt his movement is only linear. That means he moves from Kaduna to Zaria to Kano. That's not all the possible hope of movement this fella has. This guy can also move into the past. This one. Okay. Um, let me give you a scenario quickly. Um, do you still remember when in the book of Job chapter 1 when the Bible says that a day came when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came with them. Do you remember? Now God asked Satan, ah, how has it been? Where are you coming from? He said, I've been walking up and down to and fro the earth. The word walk in that scripture is halak. Halak is the same kind of walk that God was telling Joshua that wherever the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I'm going to give you as a possession. Halak is the walk of priesthood that makes them dominate and take over territory. And he said, that's what I've been doing and I've covered all the earth except the province that Job was established as the warden. It was only his territory I could not halak because you had set up a hedge around him. There is a barricade that you have spiritually enforced around him so it is impossible for me to halak around Job. <coughs> in this is halakim he had visited your family too he had, you, you, you know when, when the devil was questioned he did not say okay let me check my file he had Job's data in real time and he downloaded evidences he downloaded intelligence about Job and about his activity just in one meeting the reason is because of his halakim enterprise in that enterprise, he visited your family too. In that enterprise, he visited your home. In that enterprise, he visited. Do you know? Are you with me? It was in that same encounter that the accuser now brought a matter. And the accuser said, in my own experience, walking around, 
Job does not serve you for, any, for nothing. It's because you have put a hedge around him. Meanwhile, this activity he is deploring now is his status as a lion. It's his status as an accuser of the brethren. Are you with me? Where is he accusing them? In the court of heaven. There are activities that take place in the court of heaven that have grievous effects upon you in the natural, in your business, in your workplace, in your family. And those activities are taking place in the court of heaven. Now, you see, what, what I discovered is that believers of this day are totally ignorant of the proceedings of that court. They are just victims of what issues from that court. You see, God's status in that court is, 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 is the status of justice. And I'm going to explain that to you in a moment of time. Because I need to demand justice for some people here today. I know you don't know. Uh, all right, thank you uh, once again for joining us towards this particular clip by the God's servant, Apostle Arame Osai, on the reasons um, why some ministers, um, anointed ministers, still be confused in life. Mm -hmm and he reviewed a shocking secret and i hope this particular clip really blesses your life so much so if you do just click on that red button on the screen and subscribe and like the video and make sure you comment and share it all right thank you so much and stay tuned at matuka tv studio thank you and god bless you amen